Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Welcome to the CCNA version 7 introduction to networking a course. This is going to be Packet Tracer 3.55, Packet Tracer investigating the TCP IP model in action. So again, two parts examining web traffic and displaying elements of the TCP IP protocol. Make sure to read the background information so you understand what's going on. Basically, we're going to be sending data back and forth and looking at the PDUs. Since we are talking HTTP based traffic, we're probably looking at our layer 7 data, but we're probably going to be looking at both layer 7, uh, layer 4, the segment, the packet, and the frame. Alright, I'm going to readjust my window. Part one of this activity, we're going to be using the simulation mode. So click on simulation. Uh, we're going to select HTTP based off of the information. So select HTTP from the event simulation. So event lists. You'll notice there is nothing there. Oh, we've got to click on the event. We're going to be doing miscellaneous HTTP. You can also do HTTPS. If we click on our web traffic, oh, let's finish reading all of them. If necessary, click edit filter on the bottom, uh, bo uh, bottom. Make sure you can see that. You can also do the show, show all, show none. Click the show all, show none until the box is are clear. And then select the HTTP. Step two, let's generate that traffic. So we're going to go to the web client. First one is the configuration. We don't want any of that. We want the desktop. We want to connect to our web browser. And I'm going to make sure that I'm doing this right. Click the first colored square in the event list. Oh, oh sorry. I got ahead of myself. We need to go to this website. Local. Hit go. That would should generate some traffic, but again, we're in simulation mode, so we need to play it forward so we can hit the next button. All right, and it re actually received the web unit. So I'm going to pause it. I want constant delay, yeah, that's fine. There we go. All right, so we connected to the web client. Here's the layer one data, web client. Layer two information, or sorry, uh, our web server information. We uh, received a frame. So actually I'm gonna move that and go back to one. And then we can see the inbound and outbound PDUs. So we're going to work all the way through. So we can click capture and forward in real time. So that's what these buttons are. Again, we're still at layer two. So we have our data. Layer two is our frame. We're still at layer one. On the outer layer, we finally got our frame. Our client now has our DNS query. We had to figure out where our www.osi.local was, hence why we are at layer 4 using port 53. That is going to be our DNS. Our web server responds with our DNS requests for that information 
If we look at the inbound PDU, we can see the details. Again, port 53, random source, well, it's a return request, so it's a random uh, port there. We know this is DNS. Again, port 53 is DNS, so we can see the information. We can see the variable length. So from there, we go to the next one. Okay, we can see that we are translating it to a web portal. So the device will receive the TCP sync segment over port 80. Uh, the receive segment uh, sequence number is set to zero, ACK is set to zero, and the data length is set to 24. We can look at the data more in depth. Here's our sequence and our acknowledged number. As we move over, our acknowledged uh, number is increased by one. If we go to our web server, again, looking at our destination, its acknowledgement number is one, the outbound sequence number is now received and it is incremented by one. Here is our web client receiving the information. Both sequence and acknowledgement still number one. Here we have port 80, but now you're going to notice that we have our upper layer data. Here's our ethernet. Here is our TCP still sequence and acknowledgement number one. Here is our HTTP requests. Here is our data for our HTTP requests. Here is our web server. Again, we can see HTTP. We can look at the inbound. Our acknowledgement number has gone up. It went up by 102. We can now see the data connection. Our web client. Notice our web client does not have any data at layer seven, six, or five. It's still at layer or uh, at layer four at port eighty. So we can look at that, and see what's going on. We can see our acknowledgement numbers are increasing. We'll see that the sequence number now is one greater than the acknowledgement of our last frame was one o two. Now the sequence number is now one o three. So as we look at it, we can see the additional padding. And you can now look at the details of the outbound. You can see the acknowledgement number, again, one greater than the previous sequence number, which previous sequence number is 103. Add one, gets to 104. And we can go back to the web server. We can see the port and destination, look at the inbound. We can see the TCP again, slowly incrementing its data. So we ran through all of this. So I'm going to play it one more time so we can see it. Step one, web cl uh, client sent data over to the web server in the form of a request. DNS had to occur. It responded. Web client now had the IP information and the DNS query. It was able to do its processing. And now it's just communicating back and forth. It now should have been able to grab the data and close the session. So if we close any of the uh, PDU information, we can always go back to show all, show none. We ran through all of this, so we ran through the DNS query. 
if we go back to I believe this guy port 53 we can look at the outbound we can see the query the DNS query is specifically the variable name or our domain name click the uh, last DNS info color All right, don't really care, blah, blah, blah. All right, challenge question. What port is the web server listening on for DNS querying? DNS is port 59. Remember that the source port might be randomized. The destination port typically is not. You'll notice on some of the requests, we have things like this. Source port 53, destination port 1025. Remember, this was a response. So, the originating query source port was 1025. The destination port of the original query was source port 53. So, the response to that would be the source port of the server 53 to the new destination of the return, uh, the query at uh, the actual session communication that had requested it which was port 1025 so that's how we got that destination port it's not a destination port that is a fixed one that was a response that's why we picked that up all right so that was all for this six more review based lab but being able to show you how to use the simulator and be able to walk through the environment Again, questions, thoughts, issues, concerns, say something. If you need me to do a slower review of this lab, again, reach out and we can adjust. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.